This is my house. I paid millions of dollars for it. This is what I'm adding on to it. Technically, 28,000 square feet. But do you know what started this idea over here? It was something really small. My parents are ailing, they're aging, and you know what, when they retired, they retired with bankruptcy, which meant that as baby boomers, they've got no money, they've got no credit, and they've got no leg to stand on. Fortunately, they have a son that can help take care of them, but because they're old, they need elevators instead of stairs, etc. So I decided to build this next door. And yes, it did get out of hand, but it all started not just because of my parents, but because of a pandemic in this country of baby boomers that are losing houses left and right because of a brand new problem that is emerging in this country. And it's with our retired folks losing everything. Let me give you the scoop. One, one shot, now the future be yours. Go. Bottom line, retired people, they can't keep their homes. And when you take a look at the stats, it's devastating because it used to be a small problem, but just in the last 20 years, it's turned into a massive problem because of taxes, the cost of living, affordability, the cost of homes going up, and so much more. Check it out. We talk about retired people, but really we're talking about a generation called the baby boomers, right? This is a term used to describe people that were born between 1946, post-World War II, and 1964. The boomer generation makes up a substantial portion of the world's population because it's the largest generation that ever existed. After the war, like literally we had to repopulate the planet and that's what that generation did. Boomers have the highest rate also, by the way, of home ownership in the country, approximately 80%, which means they may have gained the most, but now they have the most to lose. What on earth does this have to do with the rate of homeless citizens. High housing costs and a shortage of affordable housing, older adults are now the fastest growing segment of America's homeless population. Well, in a 2020 journal article for the American Society on Aging, of all the homeless single adults in the early 1990s, 11% were aged 50 on up. But by 2003, just 13 years later, the percentage grew to 37%. Look at that statistic, going from 11% to 37%, like that's concerning. And you know what, we don't have data on what it is today for 2023, but I promise you that number has only gotten worse. Check this out. Now the age 50 plus demographic now represents half of all the homeless adults in the United States, which basically means that when you like, when you see the homeless people on the streets, there's at least a 50% or greater chance that they're 50 years old on up. Four years before my parents' bankruptcy, they decided, hey, we're literally out of luck. My dad was in construction, he had shot his back, he had shot his knees, basically, he didn't have the ability to work the way he used to. And so what they decided to do was open an old folks home. And uh, this was always kind of a dream of theirs. They, they thought this would be a great retirement because they, they heard that people that were aging and ailing later in life would often pay four, five, or $6,000 a month to be cared for in a home. So they converted their own home to an assisted living center. And you know they imagined that their six beds would be filled with people paying four or 5,000 a month. And they did the math and like, hey, we're going to take care of these people, but if we're bringing in 20 or $30,000 a month, after all of our expenses, we should be fine. And when they decided to move forward with that dream, I was the one that cut them a $100,000 check to make it a reality. That's what the bank needed for them to do the remodel and basically get the business started. Now, my parents did end up paying me back, but a few years later, they could never get more than one or two people uh, to basically occupy the assisted living center. My dad really didn't know how to do any kind of marketing, and the bottom line is, they ended up losing the house. They lost the business, they lost everything. And I feel really fortunate that I was in a position to call him up and say, hey, why don't you move you know, from Seattle, Washington, come move to Utah, be with my wife and I. We're prepared for this and we'll receive you with open arms. And they were so nervous and scared. They're like, wow, who would, who would wanna take on that kind of burden? But I had been prepared almost my entire life to wanna to do that for them. We now know that wasn't an isolated incident though. That is a growing pandemic that is happening in our country right now, is that the people that are financially in the worst spot, it's not the young people that are poor and have low salaries and they can't keep up with the cost of living. It's the people that are no longer marketable. They're retired and they don't have skills that the marketplace values anymore because of their age. And so they need more money and Walmart can only hand out so many jobs, which means that this great lifestyle that they were used to of 80, 90, $100,000 a year drops all the way down to social security and whatever they had in retirement. Let's take a look at that number because it ain't a lot. Speaking of retirement, 
how much money do they have actually set aside when they get to that retirement age? 85% of baby boomers that are currently working and saving in their 401k plans have an average balance of $256,000. Now, by the time they achieve 54 years old, they hit their peak earnings and peak spending. And on average, it's right around $95,000 a year. So they may have started with bad salaries, but through aging and getting better at their skills and picking up maturity at some point by their mid fifties, they're actually earning a top rate. And imagine spending $95,000 a year, but only retiring on $256,000. It means that within a few years of retirement, you are shit out of luck. But that is not the only problem that they're facing. Not only do they have retirement that's gonna deplete really fast, but they do have their homes. And remember, there's gotta be a way that they become homeless. I got news for you. It's called property taxes. Because you're thinking, well, man, I hope they got their home paid off by now. And even if they do, guess what? It doesn't mean you get to live in your house for free. But here I come, the government. And I get to take 40% of your lunch. And that, Lauren, is how taxes work. The government technically owns the land and they're gonna charge you every year for it. And that tax can be really steep. Check it out. In California, the average price of a home in 1970 was $24,300. And back then they were complaining about the booming by the 80s. They're like, oh my gosh, like, can you believe it? These $24,000 houses are now $80,000. How can we live with this? Like the market's got to crash, come back and get reasonable. Ah, fast forward to today, that same house is $830,000. And with that, property taxes, right? Because due to property taxes, that's an additional $6,800 being charged to the boomers every year for covering that tax. That may not look like a lot of money, but that's like an extra $600 every single month. And when social security is what, $1,800 a month? For some people, $1,200 a month? For some, $2,400 a month? Just taxes alone is like eating up a majority of that income. And then if you add to that the cost of living, for example, in California, that's $4,990 every single month. So you start adding all of these things up and it's like, whoa, if someone worked their entire life and they go through the 401k and IRA, then all of these expenses, they're gonna be forced to sell their houses. And then they're gonna get some money and then they're gonna live off of that and then they're gonna run out of that money and then what do they do? They go homeless. So let's talk the game of financial freedom. Historically, over long periods, markets have grown and the earlier you invest, the more compounding interest you actually get. So you might be thinking, hey, I'm doing it right. I'm putting my money in a 401k and an IRA and I'd say, Ooh, pause, you're actually still doing it wrong because you're not getting compounding on double digit or triple digit returns. You're earning that on like a 401k's 30 year average at 5% or maybe an IRA's 30 year average at 7%. Your blended return of 6% over time and then you subtract out inflation, you're pretty much earning nothing. Real estate, however, it produces an insanely high ROI compared to a 401k and an IRA. 78% of boomers own real estate and yet, they're struggling financially because instead of just owning their own home, if real estate performs so well, then why not own five homes? Why not own 10 homes? You realize at 26 years old, I own 25 homes and they paid me a six figure residual income so I didn't have to get a job. Literally, I'm fresh out of college and I'm done. Why? Because I owned real estate. And there's a particular reason why, because to be financially free, you need to understand that a single property that's gonna be your best bet for your retirement. Like compare your 401k to owning a home, the equity in a home, you'll perform better on a home than a 401k. But that's where you find yourself saying, shoot, I wish I had 10 more of these because I would be 10 times better off. How much better off? Let me show you. Take that $50,000 that you have sitting in retirement right now that's earning an average of 6%. Did you know over the next 20 years that number will triple? It'll become worth 160,000. How much better is real estate? Take that same $50,000 and if you're just earning a modest 25%, which is really easy, you end up making 27 times more money. It doesn't just triple, it grows to $4.3 million. And you know what? That's maybe not necessarily rich, but that can still be a really great retirement. And right now, I got news for you. If you're not investing in real estate because you're doing the 401k IRA house pair offer thing, I'm just telling you right now, you're doing it wrong. But if you wanna get into the game of real estate where 90% of millionaires become millionaires, click the link below 
and learn about partnering with me. I can show you how to convert those useless funds into the game of real estate, not just earn 25%, but significantly higher, which means that what you're looking for retirement now can actually become a reality. It's 100% not too late. Click the link below, learn about partnering. Let me show you what I've done with my last 1,000 partners. So it turns out there really is a secret to retirement. And if you want to know the exact numbers of how you plot the perfect retirement game plan, what I want you to do is click this link right here. I'm going to show you how to retire in style.